day. Uh, I'm Sam Pollard, director, filmmaker, with some of my colleagues, John Hoffman, a six-time Emmy-winning filmmaker who's done films like Fauci and Antidote and has spent many years working on films about key health issues and was the executive vice president of documentaries and specials at Discovery. And for nearly two decades was the vice president of documentary program at HBO and co-director Christine Turner, also a very prolific filmmaker who did a documentary about Janae Bridges, Unamplified for American Masters. Last year, she had a film that was shortlisted called Lynching Postcards, Tokens of a Great Day. And I know that the, she also did this wonderful film called Homegoings about a gentleman who was a mortician up in Harlem. They have made a new wonderful film called The Barber of Little Rock. And the subject is here, Arlo, Arlo Washington, who is uh, from Little Rock, Arkansas, who has an organization and is the founder and president of People's Trust Community Loan Fund and has this great barber school where he teaches young men and women how to be barbers. Christine, give us an overview about the documentary. Sure. The Barber of Little Rock um, explores America's widening racial wealth gap through the story of Arlo Washington, who's a local barber in, in Little Rock, um, turned banker, and how he sees, um, how he imagines a just economy and how he is changing lives through the nonprofit loan fund that he started. So let's take a look at the first clip and then we'll come back and have a wonderful Q&A. It is a challenge when you can't put gas in your car, when you can't buy food, you can't pay your light bill, or you can't pay your rent. Life is going on, life is happening, you know, and trying to put a Band-Aid and stop the bleeding on the effects of generational poverty. Investments and resources that are meant to get to these communities haven't gotten to them. There has to be economic warriors in the community to create economic justice. Hey, what's going on, man? Everybody, everybody good? My name is Arlo Washington, and my purpose in life is to advance equity, create opportunities, and build the community. So, Christine, John, how did you guys connect with Arlo? What was the genesis of the film? Christine and I were given this you know, um, challenge uh, to make a film about the racial wealth gap. And um, when you read about the history of Black banking in this country, and there's a remarkable book by a woman named Marissa Baradaran called The Color of Money. And the history of Black banking is a, a, a terrible one. In, in this country, and it's it's a series of decisions that this government has made um, over the years, um, starting with Reconstruction, of just failed policy after failed policy. And Clinton created a program that's run, administered through the Fed, um, which is community development financial institutions. And in that book, it's sort of singled out as one of the only things the government has ever done to try to address this successfully, to try to address this issue of the racial wealth gap. And uh, you know, the black community is just systematically and systemically excluded from the banking system in this country. And that is, there's just this deep, long history. Um, and when you read about these community development financial institutions, you realize that there is something you can point to that there is, there is hope in this program. It's not big enough, it should be funded 10 times what it is, but at least the institutions and the way that this money is getting into communities of color and rural communities um, in the way that Arlo, who runs a CDFI, is able to leverage those dollars and get them into the community. It's changing people's lives. And so we, made contact with the first administrator of that program in the Clinton administration, a remarkable woman named Donna Gambrell. And uh, we asked her, look, we would love to embed. These are high touch financial institutions. These Arlo and his team, his colleagues, they are deeply involved in the lives of the people who they're making loans to because they want them to succeed. And so we thought, is never films ever made about CDFIs? And so Donna, 
like immediately she said, I have the person you've got to meet Arlo Washington. So that's how we were introduced to Arlo. And Arlo, were you surprised when these two filmmakers approached you about documenting what you were doing in your community? Of course, of course. Um, it was a surprise to me because, you know, um, I felt as if there was a, it was a topic that, you know, was oftentimes swept under the rug and not really discussed. So for someone to be interested in making a film about it, you know, yeah, that was that was that was uh, uh, news to me. So, yeah, definitely. I was rewatching the film yesterday and I was uh, pretty impressed with your barber school and how you were teaching the young people the, the rudiments of shaving yeah. and cutting hair and stuff. And then to see you then jump in the car and go over to your people's trust. That's pretty amazing, man. Christine, what was it that, you know, that sort of excited you when you were on location shooting the, the film with Arlo? Yeah, you know, I think it's his passion for his work that was immediately evident. And just the way that Arlo listened to people, like really listened to the people that he was working with on a day-to-day -day basis, people that were either coming in to the barber shop, or excuse me, the barber college, or to the shipping container, which by the way, is the location where his loan fund um, is. And so we were, um, we were really drawn to um, the way that he was moving between these two different locations, between these two different professions, the sort of very organic way that he came into um, becoming um, a banker. You know, there's this kind of um, longer history of, of, of barbers kind of informally lending to people in their community. And, and Arlo really exemplified that. And I think that was one of the things that attracted us to him, um, just along with his passion for his, for his work. And we were also really drawn to Little Rock, I think, as a, as a location, you know, it, it being, um, having an important place, I think, in, in civil rights history, certainly, you know, in regards to desegregation, but we hadn't and haven't really been seeing too much about Little Rock um, on screen otherwise. And and we felt like Arlo was a really important pillar in the community and person to sort of help us um, understand what was happening there now. There's a real wonderful intimacy that you guys capture with this film. I mean, the scenes when Arlo is talking to people and giving out loans, like to the couple who lost their home and stuff. I thought that was very powerful. And then one of the other powerful scenes in the film is that scene, Arlo, where you have the two young brothers looking at each other for what, three minutes, looking yeah. in each other's eyes, and then they hug. Very, very powerful, very emotional. How long, yeah. John, did it take for you guys to shoot the whole film? We shot for a year. Um, so I, I think that that intimacy um, that you're seeing is um, because we were there, you know, a number of times over the course of a year. But it's also because Arlo and his wife Devani, um, they 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 thought long and hard before they agreed to, you know, let us into these, you know, these these environments that that they've created that are safe spaces, not only for the people who work there, but for the people, the customers who come in, um, and. So the fact that I think the people who, who are in and around Arlo and Devaney understand that if they're allowing this film crew in, you know, it all's good. Um, so they created immediately from the first day we arrived, um, they, 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 it, it, this sort of atmosphere of trust was established. Um, and, you know, you have to shout out to Tony Hartman who shot this. I mean, who's just did a remarkable job um, and, disappeared you know he did what you know he just tony just knows how to just you know just be in and around everything and yet be invisible um and make uh it possible for you know some some very very tender moments um and and some difficult moments to be captured and um but everyone you know was very very willing and comfortable to consent even though they were revealing some very very personal aspects of their lives I thought the sequence with the lady who I guess she spent eight years in incarcerated Arlo and then she yeah. had gotten out and was homeless. Very strong, very powerful, very emotional. Is she a minister now or something? You know? No, she's uh she's uh just a community um advocate Organizer. for, for reentry, mm -hmm. yeah, for reentry and right. making sure that folks that are 
you know, recently incarcerated have um, resources when they first get out? You know, it's 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 sort of sad to see in the 21st century how, you know, systemic racism and this cultural and racial divide still so prevalent in America, you know, and so just listening to some of the stories and some of the people that you're helping, you know, both saddened me, but inspired me because of the work and the positive work you guys, you, you're doing. So I really applaud that, man. I really thank you. Really thank you. Thank you for it. And I thank John and Christine for really doing a fantastic job. And you're right. Tony Hartman did a fantastic. I was really looking at those the way you guys shot those interviews. Beautiful. <laughs> but we can't forget also that we're filming in a in a barber college where there were mirrors on every single wall. So Tony did a great job of concealing himself in, in addition right. to achieving intimacy. But also we're in a shipping container that's eight feet wide. And he managed to really work that shipping container and find some really interesting shots. And those two ladies, Arlo, who work for you, how long have they been working for you? They're very nice ladies. Yeah, they've been working for us for about four years now. Really? Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very positive yeah. energy they have. Very yeah, positive yeah. energy. Well, they have this a special, experience as well. This is a special film, man. This is a really special film. I'm excited to see it again. You know, I had seen it earlier, but now when I saw it yesterday, I said, wow, this is a really special, special documentary, man. You should be very proud. Have you had a screening in Little Rock? Have you guys screened not in yet. Little Rock? Not, not yet. We, we plan on having that pretty soon, uh, but, but very excited about that and got many anticipating um, to be able to see it as well. We've had some really great festival screenings um, and there's been some really interesting Q&As after the film. But I just want to share that if two screenings, two um, older white men with gray hair like me um, stood up and said, I get it now. You know, when you talk about the racial wealth gap, you know, I thought I understood it, but now I truly understand what people mean when they talk about the racial wealth gap. This film helped me understand it. So I think for, you know, so for two privileged white guys to um, sit down and watch this film and have that be the reaction, they have to share it. They've got to, you know, express that to a crowd. Um, that this was something they did not understand um, in a in a mm -hmm. visceral way, and that that, that um, has been very powerful um, to have that response. Wow, that's important. So why don't we show the the uh, second clip now? Economic justice is is right and wrongs, fixing the system, you know, some type of repayment for injustice. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. So if I don't see any fruit, then I don't see any impact. So if you have money and you have wealth and you can't create impact, what's the point? What is justice? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for people of color? Justice is just not quite yet available for everybody. Justice. Justice. It's just being a black man in this world. Huh? Man, good luck. Justice is something that we need, but that's what we're fighting for. Right now, today, I can, I can look at justice as empowerment. Just doing what's right and being fair. You ever heard that phrase, get your money right? I gotta help the community get their money right. The community has to get the money right, and this is an opportunity to get the money right. So I'm on a mission, and it ain't over. It's just begun. Great ending. I love that line, get your money right. I use that line too, Arlo. Absolutely. <laughs> let, me have, let me ask one final question of the two filmmakers here. In case someone hasn't hasn't had a chance to see the Barber Little Rock, is there one thing about this documentary, Christine or John, that stands out for you that would make someone want to check it out? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a serious film, and there are moments certainly of hardship. Um, but I also think there are real moments um, of brotherly love 
and um, of deep humanity displayed by Arlo and other people. Um, so I think in this moment in particular, um, that there's some real value in, in that. Um, and so that's for me, um, emotionally, the thing that really stands out. John? Well, you know, coming off that clip, um, where you hear a variety of people that you've met in the film speak to, uh, a word justice, um, as serious as that word is, and hats off to Christine for the interviews that she did with those people. But those people are the people that work with Arlo, um, that have gotten loans from Arlo, that have attended his Barber College. And um, I just think if you haven't seen this film to, and you saw that clip, um, the insight that those people provide about the black experience today and this racial wealth gap that they are struggling against every day, all of them. Um, I think that it will really be enlightening um, to, to hear these uh, people speak in a way that we just don't often hear people speaking about. Um, and I think I think it's a real privilege with what they share with us and therefore with an audience. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Christine. And thank you, folks, for listening and watching this interview and Q&A with John, Christine, and Arlo. Let me thank the Friends of Story Syndicate and uh, enjoy your day. Thanks for watching.